The views and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Thank you for joining me for another episode of My Story Living with Lupus Podcast. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks, and I'm so glad that you could join me on this Monday, April 19th, 2021. Did you know that minor changes in lupus disease activity matters? Well, if you didn't, you're going to find out why it matters. Also, have you ever heard the mantra, I have lupus, but lupus doesn't have me? Well, I'm going to give you my take on that mantra. So, you know what I want you to do? That's right. All the way from the United States to San Juan and Isabella, Puerto Rico. Get ready to grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, and to my listeners late at night. You know I appreciate you. So get ready to grab your favorite glass of wine and join the conversation right here on my story, Living with Lupus Pie. Ophthalmology Associates, PC, Drs. Berman and Dr. Zuckerbrod, treating diseases of the eye and eye surgery. You can reach them at 313-341-3450. Hey, thank you for joining me. Listen, before I go um, into the, you know, the disease activity in lupus, you know, the changes in the disease activity, I should say, in lupus, um, there's two things I want to mention. One, my fourth procedure is scheduled for Monday. Um, April the 27th, and I will be so glad because um, it looks like I'm about five months pregnant right now. That's how my stomach has um, expanded. Two, I was reading an interesting article in um, Science Direct, and it was regarding the neuropsychiatric involvement in systemic lupus arithmetosis. Now, um, what I'm about to tell you, I'm going to refer to neuropsychiatric systemic lupus as NP. N is in Nancy, P is in Paul, S L E. Okay. Now, this type is a challenge for clinicians, both at a diagnostic and therapeutic level. Now, in 1999, 
the American College of Rheumatology proposed a set of definitions for 19 NPSLE syndromes with the intention of homogenizing the terminology for research purposes and clinical practice. The prevalence of NPSLE varies widely according to different series and is estimated to be between 37 and 95 percent. This is due to the multiple factors such as um, unlike definitions used, the diverse design of the studies, type of population, which is race, type, and severity of symptoms, and follow-up of the different cohorts of patients with SLE. When I return, we'll get right back into it, because I know you hear my tea kettle whistling, so stay with me. All right, I'm back. I have my cup of tea. Um, Let's get back into um, the conversation about neuropsychiatric systemic lupus arrhythmatosis. Now, in recent years, some authors have tried excluding minor neuropsychiatric manifestations in order to try to reduce this wide variation in the prevalence of NPSLE. Now, since they are very prevalent in the general population, other authors have developed various models for the attribution of neuropsychiatric events to SLE that can assist clinicians in this diagnostic process. And finally, some authors developed and validated in 2014 a new algorithm based on the definition of the ACR that includes the evaluation of the patient's lupus activity together with imaging techniques and the analysis of cerebrospinal fluid, better known as CSF. Now, with the aim of trying to differentiate the true neuropsychiatric manifestations attributable to SLE, in 2010, the European League Against Rheumatism, better known as EULAR, developed recommendations for the management of NPSLE. They found abundant literature published later where, in addition to the recommendations for the management of the 19 NPSLE syndromes defined by the ACR, additional recommendations were given for other neurological and or psychiatric syndromes conditions, and complications that have been associated to SLE in recent years. They reviewed um, diagnostic and therapeutic management of the different entities. Now, moving 
into the activity of SLE. And, well, let me put it this way. Do you realize that the disease activity of lupus matters? Do you realize that? And I wonder, do physicians understand that also? But here is some information that I located in regards to lupus and even minor changes in disease activity matter. One unit increase in disease activity score raised mortality risk by 22%. I found this information in MedPage today. Now, what this research may indicate is that each one unit increase on a disease activity score during the first year after enrollment into a systemic lupus arrhythmatosis, better known as SLE cohort, was associated with a significant increased risk for death and organ damage during subsequent follow-up, researchers have reported. Now, on a multivariable analysis, a one-unit increase on the safety of estrogens in lupus erythematosus national assessment, better known as Selena, S-E-L-E-N-A, version of the SLE Disease Activity Index, better known as S-L-E-D-A-I, was associated with a 22% higher risk of death during an average seven years of follow-up. Now, in addition... Among patients with no organ damage at baseline, each one unit increase on the Selena dash S L E D A I during the first year after entrance into the Hopkins lupus cohort was associated with an increased risk in overall organ damage during the subsequent seven years, which was a relatively short follow-up time. The researchers reported online in lupus science and medicine. However, treatment with hydroxychloroquine better known as Plaquenil, significantly reduce the likelihood of damage. Now, survival rates have risen dramatically in recent decades, but irreversible organ damage remains an important concern with patients who have organ damage being likely to develop more damage, thus lessening their likelihood of survival. Now, therefore, um, to explore the current pattern of damage occurring among patients with SLENA racially, diverse study population. 
The Petries Group analyzed data from their cohort, including 1,168 patients enrolled from 1987 to 2010, patients with at least two years of follow-up were included in this analysis. Disease activity was assessed at each quarterly clinic visit, along with data on medication use, comorbidities, and damage to the renal, cardiovascular, peripheral vascular, pulmonary, neuropsychiatric, and muscular cellular system. More than 90% of patients were women. 55% were white and 39% were of Black African ancestry. Median age at cohort enrollment was 36. The mean adjusted Selena and SLEDA index was three during the first year after enrollment with 55% of patients having mild to moderate disease activity defined as a Selena SLEDA index below three. Medication use included oral prednisone in 60.1% of the patients, oral prednisone in daily doses above 7.5 milligrams in 36.6%. Hydroxychloroquine in 65% and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, better known as NSAIDs, in 38.3 and immunosuppressants in 22.4%. Stick with me. When we return, we'll finish up. So don't go away. Come on back. The Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendrix Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness giving hope and empowering those who suffer with chronic illness. See one, reach one, educate one to empower the masses. You can contact the foundation at 313-303-9217 or visit their website at HTT. P.S. colon forward slash forward slash C-E-M-P-H foundation dot com. This is a 501 C3 organization. No one should live in lack. All contributions are tax deductible. going to be honest with you. And I hope what I'm about to say will help someone. Any changes in our disease activity matters. You know why? Because lupus was once much more deadly. Only 50% of people diagnosed with this illness back in 1955 were expected to live for more 
them four years. Disease activity is important. Researchers say the survival rate for patients with systemic lupus erythematosus, better known as SLE, has improved. They say for many reasons, which include improvements in the classification of the patients, earlier diagnosis. Now that, for some, well, yeah, that is true because, you know, my symptoms started to occur in the 60s at the age of five. They didn't know what was going on. And it must have been in remission um, after high school. Then it started to flare up again in college. And um, I wasn't clinically diagnosed till 2004. Now, researchers also state that inclusion of milder cases into survival statistics, more aggressive treatments such as the use of cytotoxic immunosuppressive agents and pulse high dose prednisone. People with lupus has improved. Now they say that it has been advancement in the treatment of hypertension, infections, and renal failure, including renal dialysis and transplantations. But if this is the case, you know, yes, there are so-called new drugs out to control the symptoms of lupus. But lupus, any slight change in disease activity, it damages our body. Now, let's not forget, in people who have lupus, the immune system attacks healthy cells and tissues, which causes pain, swelling, organ damage, among other systems. With people who have lupus, what about the side effects of the medication that we are prescribed to take? Have you ever looked at the side effects of the meds. So we have the side effects of our own immune system attacking the healthy cells and tissues of our body, which causes pain, swelling, organ damage, and among other symptoms. Then we have the medication that we are on, which causes damage to our organ. It causes organ damage, excuse me, among other symptoms. So it's like a catch to a catch 22 situation. I'd be damned if I do, I'd be damned if I don't. But when you're diagnosed and that pain hits you, you're willing to go ahead and take the medication to ease the pain. You're willing to take the medication that'll make you feel better. Yes, you're willing to make that sacrifice to take the medication that the doctors give you that could cause more organ damage. 
to just feel normal. And in that turn, some get hooked on that medication. And then you're looking at another problem, prescription drug addiction. So yes, the minor disease activity of lupus, it matters. Now, Among patients without organ damage, at the onset, 39% developed damage during follow-up, catch-22 situation. There were no differences in the risk of damage when the analysis was stratified by race. During follow-up, 3% of patients without renal damage at baseline develop this organ damage and each one unit increase in adjusted mean Selena Dash SLEDA index was associated with a 24 increased risk of renal damage. Having ever been treated with hydroxychloroquine lowered the likelihood of renal damage by 70%, the researchers reported. Among patients with no cardiovascular damage, at the time of enrollment, 7% subsequently developed this type of damage and each one unit increase in Selena and SLEDA index was associated with a 17 po- a 17% higher risk however patients who use NSAIDs were found to have a 66% increased risk of cardiovascular damage. Moreover, patients who were treated with antihypertensives had an 81% greater risk of cardiovascular damage. The findings of increased cardiovascular damage with NSAID and antihypertensives use may suggest that the known cardiovascular risk of non-NSAIDs in the general population is also applicable to patients with SLE and highlights the importance of assessing cardiovascular risk in this patient's population. Now, Petrie and colleagues further asserted changes in Selena Dash SLEDA index did not influence the risk for damage among other organ systems, including the peripheral vascular, pulmonary, and neuropsychiatric system. The study confirmed that even minor fluctuations in disease activity in patients with mild to moderate disease underscore the disease, the need, I'm sorry, for active measures to manage SLE disease activity over time. A limitation of the study was noted, and it was that it was performed at a single triary center. You know, 
We need further research, further awareness. We need for the general population to take this illness seriously and become aware. Don't wait for it to happen in your family. Get involved and get active in knowing about what we go through as a population who is suffering. I shouldn't say suffering. Who has this chronic illness which has no cure. When we return, I will give you my own perspective on, I may have lupus, but lupus doesn't have me. You know that mantra that we hear, well, and see on social media. And it could, and another one is that this is what lupus looks like. You know, so stick with me. And I'll give my personal perspective on that. If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at mystorylivingwithlupus at gmail.com. Also visit us on our Instagram page and also our website, My Story Living with Lupus. Well, I've enjoyed you on this Monday, April 19th, 2021. Remember the mantra, let it marinate deep down in your spirit. The mantra, I have lupus, but lupus doesn't have me. I've given you my personal viewpoint on that mantra. Yes, I have lupus and lupus has me right now, but it's my mindset that determines how far I'll go. Yes, I have lupus, but I don't plan on letting lupus stop me. Let it marinate and sizzle in your spirit. Hey, go on over to the My Story Living with Lupus podcast website and go to shop. We have added some new items in and um, new items will be added all this week. Also go on over to the Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendrix website. If you have a child and you would like to start his or her own library, go on over to https colon forward slash forward slash c-e-m-p-h foundation dot com and look under educational service and it will tell you how you can start a library for your child. Also, when you shop with My Story Living with Lupus podcast, 100% of all sales go to the Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendrix Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness. This foundation supports those with chronic illnesses by purchasing medication and feeding the homeless, feeding families in need. So go on over there and see what you like and shop. But before I go, I want to leave you with this. Be happy, not because everything is good, but because you can see the good side of everything. 
that's the mindset you should have each and every day. It has been a blessing to wake up this morning if you are able to listen to this podcast. So be happy, rejoice, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm Susan Hendricks, your host for my story, Living with Lupus Podcast. You'll hear from me again this week before I go into the hospital. I've already had my pre-op testing. And if you're wondering about how my COVID test went, I tested negative for COVID. And that's why they're going ahead with the procedure. So I'll see you guys later on in the week. Have a peaceful, prosperous, and also blessed day. See you later on in the week, and thank you for joining me.